Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I am Lucas Zanato. Uh, my co-author, Marco Barros, is also with us. But since we have a short time, I will uh, begin the presentation. Uh, this presentation results from a project that we are developing with the support of São Paulo State Research Foundation. And we are based mainly uh, at the University of São Paulo Law School. So our purpose is to see how the legal system, how law can deal with risk and danger. And uh, we choose uh, social systems theory as developed by Niklas Bull, which is a, a high abstract social theory. But our purpose was to see how we can apply this, this framework uh, in a more empirical topic. So we elected fake news, fake news in uh, elections as uh, a team of observation. Uh, so we will present the, our goal of our framework and uh, a kind of case study that we developed about fake news in uh, 2018 Brazilian presidential elections. Uh, our uh, hypothesis is that uh, the legal system has a function to that there is to uh, generalize norms, normative expectations, trust in society, but uh, it has to deal with phenomena like fake news, uh, which are very difficult for the legal system to deal with, because uh, fake news involve technology. Uh, technology is based mainly on cognitive expectations, on expectations that imply learning, while law is based upon norms, uh, which is the opposite of learning. Uh, fake news also involves multiple systemic interferences, such as in law, in politics, in economy, in, in the media system, uh, and also fake news involves technology because uh, it, it is the, the mass spread of this information through uh, digital platforms uh, and social media. Uh, so that it is a cross-border phenomenon and the legal and the political systems are, uh, are mainly national systems uh, and have to deal with this global phenomenon. Uh, as I said, our theoretical framework is based on social systems theory, and uh, Luhmann uses this, uses, uses this concept uh, that uh, the uncertainty the, that is attributed to the environment, which is danger, which is radical uh, insecurity, uh, is, is attributed to the environment. So danger, uncertainty. And the the problems uh, of insecurity that are produced by a system within a system uh, involves risk. So he works with this form, this distinction between danger and risk or radical uncertainty attributed to the environment and risk which is manageable by, uh, by a system and its operations. Uh, and we, if we get the political system and the legal system, for instance, we see that these systems have to, to couple with uncertainty to, uh, by translating the irritation coming from the environment through its public spheres, which in, uh, in the case of politics is public opinion, and in the case of law, all kind of uncertainty is translated through legal rights and legal personality. And once uncertainty coming from the environment is translated within a system, it, it turns into risk. Uh, and risk is the subject of decision by some organizations. The, the core organization of the legal system are the courts, the judiciary, and the peripheral organizations are the political branches. But in the case of politics, the the, legal, the legislative is at the core of the political system and in the periphery of the political system we find the political parties and the interest groups. Uh, so they need to, to deal with the risk that is internalized in a system coming from uh, the uncertainty. 
everything that is in the environment of these systems. Uh, Newman has also uh, an interesting concept of means of disseminating communication. He, he, he doesn't consider communication as a transmission of information, but uh, in fact as an operation which involves information, the use of information and understanding. Uh, and this varies, uh, the, the use of the, 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 this operation varies according to history. So we have uh, societies based on morality, then uh, with writing we have hierarchical societies in which uh, some elite uh, master the writing techniques, and uh, with press we come into uh, a functionally differentiated society with the difference among law, politics, science, economy. And the point for us is that we are still in this society based on functional differentiation between law, politics, economy, but social media and digital platforms, they emerge from within this society, but put some pressure, some pressures uh, for the maintenance of this functional differentiation. Uh, and one example of this is fake news. How fake news generate uncertainty, danger for every system, and, and how each system needs to translate it, uh, these dangers into uh, manageable risks. So, uh, to study this, uh, we focused on a more qualitative approach, uh, uh, about the answers that the legal system and the political system produced around uh, 2018 presidential elections in Brazil, uh, uh, in which fake news was uh, a very widespread phenomenon. So, uh, in the case uh, of the Superior Electoral Court, which is at the core of the legal system, they had a, a very difficult uh, way to deal with this new topic of fake news in elections. They uh, didn't get into collegiate decisions. They couldn't stabilize a case law uh, with criteria for uh, judging cases of fake news uh, in elections. Uh, they tried to develop some criteria considering the right to freedom of expression, but didn't consider important topics such as data privacy, hate speech. So the, the core of the legal system couldn't deal uh, with the, the risk of fake news in elections. And the periphery of the, the legal system, which is at the core of the political system, the legislation, was also very weak to deal with the risks of fake news in elections, in electoral procedures. Uh, we have since uh, 2014 uh, an Internet Bill of Rights. In 2018, uh, the legislative approved a general statute on personal data protection, but this statute only came into force last year, after the 2018 elections. Uh, because of the interests involved uh, uh, in personal data protection. And then after the presidential elections, uh, we have a draft of a fake news statute, which has been approved in, in the Senate and is now being discussed at the Chamber of Deputies. So uh, legislation is also trying to deal with this new uh, phenomenon. And we mapped that some techniques, some strategies were used by the legislature, like the use of very broad norms in, in the place of rules, uh, that is, the, the use of principles, the use of technical concepts, which are defined not by, by the law, but by the, the internet and the information technology. And we found this dynamics of uh, what I called peripherization. That is, the, the, the core of the legal system, the courts, are not deciding very well because
because they are awaiting legislation at the periphery of the system. And legislation is trying to, to produce answers uh, with civil society at the political periphery. So uh, an example of this is this institution of regulated self-regulation, which is uh, in the draft statute on fake news. Uh, and the idea is that the state can't deal with this phenomenon, so leg the legislation needs to work with the information companies, the digital platforms, uh, to uh, adopt self-regulation, but uh, cope with state law. It's a kind of mix uh, between state law and private self-regulation. Uh, We've got uh, three or four minutes, Lucas. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then we see that uh, if we conceive the, the electoral process as a kind of electoral market, uh, we see uncertainty, danger coming from the economic system and from the digital media system and not being well managed as risks uh, by the political and legal systems. For instance, the electoral law prohibited enterprises, legal persons, donations for political campaigns, but many entrepreneurs uh, funded uh, the mass message triggering uh, during the elections. So this is not a risk that the legal system can deal with. It is a danger for the, the fair competition, the fair electoral competition. Uh, and this is our conclusion that we had a very uh, weak legal framework to deal with the risks posed by, by fake news in, in the political process. Uh, I don't know if Marco uh, wants to comment something or we can discuss after with your current questions. Thank you very much, Luca. Uh, and Lucas. And uh, Marco Barros, um, yeah, if you, there's still a couple of minutes if you want to just uh, check in. Hi everyone. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to participate in the session. As Lucas mentioned, uh, our main uh, uh, task in this research was trying to map and understand this duality between risk and danger. Uh, it was with the basic idea of trying to understand how electoral fake news uh, is organized in the society, so we, of course, adopted this uh, systemic approach trying to understand the means of fake, li fake news in economic system, in political system, and also in the legal system, and trying to articulate, and of course, we, the biggest uh, problem we, we had was trying to uh, articulate this very abstract theory with the empirical material of uh, the 2018 election. So uh, this was also an important, I think, contribution concerning the methodology that we use in our research. Great. Thank you very much, Marco. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, yeah, time.